Hey guys, what's up? Sol here with another gameplay commentary. Today I'm playing Dishonored because, quite frankly, I've had this game for a while. Uh, I played through the single player, really liked it, and then just never got into the DLC, so I figured I would pick off and go ahead and hit the DLC before uh, the new Dishonored comes out, which I'm really excited for. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I promised the consoles and them not really having a generation anymore. Um, how that's kind of interesting, but the one thing I was, I kind of wanted to hold off on this video because I wanted to see what the RX 480 was, where it sat in power, what it was doing, uh, to get, uh, actually for me, myself, to get a better idea where these consoles are going. And we'll also talk about the 480 because that's new and exciting news that came out today. However, it's going to be from the perspective of somebody that's only seen reviews and, and read the reviews and whatnot, so... Uh, obviously I do not have the card myself so I cannot give you guys an in-depth analysis of it okay so what do I think about the 480 now um, that reviews and stuff have been out honestly I was kinda expecting it to be between the 390 390x power wise and it seems like all the reviews right now are showing that it's a little bit under the 390x or similar to and on paper the uh, 480 should be outdoing it just ever so slightly I'm kind of underwhelmed at this point, but that's to be understandable. Every card launches, the drivers are not that well optimized, and I think that's the case here. Now the other thing that surprised me about this card is it's only got 32 ROPs compared to anything else like 48, 64, or whatnot. Uh, I was kind of surprised about that, saying that they're pushing this for VR. Um, I'm sure it'll be fine for that. It actually has pretty good numbers under 1440 and 4K still despite not having the ROPs, but uh, I just found that kind of odd and surprising it only has 32. In total, the thing has uh, 2,304 um, shaders with 36 CUs. So compared to something like the 390X or the 390, it's 2560 or 2080 it's not the but it's not really the same amount which might also account for the lower performance maybe the core count really is a factor maybe the higher memory bandwidth is a factor so uh, i won't know that until reviewers start doing uh, other testing outside of this now everybody's kind of touting this as being a 200 hundred dollar card and it is if you're running 1080 you should have no reason to get the 8 gig honestly However, I'm running 1080, and I'll be honest with you guys. If I was to get the card, I would just spend the extra money and get the 8 gig. So in the future, if I wanted to upgrade to 1440 or 4K, uh, the card would be a little bit better poised to handle it. The other thing here that could kick in, depending on its popularity, is maybe you might not actually need the 8 gig. Um, if multi-GPU comes down the road, I can see this being a great multi-GPU uh, setup card, saying it's only $200 for the 4 gig. And then when, with DirectX and supposedly Vulkan, when you mix them together multi-GPU as opposed to something like uh, Crossfire SLI, it actually does double up the memory. So instead of having 4 gigs, you would actually have 8 across the entire um, platform there. Now how's this all go into um, consoles and why did I have to wait for this to come out to get a better idea? So what I wanted to know is what the actual power to performance and what the limitations of players are. So it seems like people pushing this to overclocking right now on the uh, reference cards are only getting about a little over 1300. Between 1320 and 1360 is what I saw today. And what that's telling me is whatever Scorpio or Xbox Scorpio turns out being, it's not a player's GPU in that thing. It's, it's something else. But with the PlayStation, uh, all the rumors are being, and the reason I think the PlayStation is going to turn out being uh, actually true what the specs were for the Neo is a couple months back when we first started hearing about it we heard it was going to be a player's gpu uh, we heard that it's the same jaguar cores but they've been up from 1.6 to 2.1 uh, we also heard that the um gpu in there that was polaris was 36 cus we actually heard that on the playstation side about two weeks before we started hearing it on the uh, PC side of things. So when this actually came out and ended up, it was like, holy shit, this is actually 36 CUs. It was like, okay, this is starting to come off a little bit more believable to me. The other thing is, is they're kind of touting the PS4 Neo as being like 4.5, even though, and this is kind of like showing like 4.8 teraflops. 
Uh, but you got to consider that the Neo is probably downclocked because of its small size. And from the reports I've been seeing, uh, the GPU clock has gone from 800 on the old one to about 924, 925 around there. So when you factor the clock is reduced that much for temperature uh, purposes and keeping the console small, uh, that seems to be the case. Like Polaris seems to match up very well with that. So with that being said, I would su suspect the Neo being around 450, 500 max, uh, with price of everything included. I still imagine PlayStation's still going to be using the same GDDR5 uh, memory for their 8 gigs and whatnot. Um, so no surprise there. They haven't really confirmed that they're getting rid of generations themselves. They've just always been telling that the PlayStation 4 Neo is an extension to kind of complement the current PlayStation 4. We'll see. I think right now they're just playing it safe. I think that they're doing the same thing Microsoft goes is going to go and do. So now when we have the information we have now, for a 6 teraflop machine to be small and run cool, there's no way this machine can actually be what Scorpio ends up being, which has me leading to believe if they stick with AMD, which I imagine they would, they have no reason not to, and AMD, and NVIDIA just can't do a good all-in-one chip, which is beneficial to any console situation. Instead of having to worry about multiple chips to cool, you just have one, essentially. And it, that, in the end, comes out cheaper, uh, regardless, so they'll probably stick with AMD, which means this thing's probably going to be Vega-based, or like a cut down Vega with a lower clock or something like that. Having said that, Vega's supposed to be a larger GPU die, and I don't see how you could sell the Scorpio now for anything under 550, if that's the case. Now, this is purely speculation right now, but that's just kind of my gut feeling on it. Um, I'd imagine also if they're going with a Vega core, they're definitely not going with Jaguar CPUs anymore. They're probably using something newer, probably Zen based, and that'll probably also drive the price up a little bit more. So that's why I'm kind of saying it's going to be like around that 550, if not $600 range. And I think the reason Sony's kind of going Polaris this time around is they get, really got bit in the butt with the uh, cost of the PlayStation 3. And I don't think they want to make that mistake again. I think it's smart to have. Uh, multiple powerful consoles in the pipeline but it's it seems like a bad idea to have one that's really stupid powerful and expensive and to the price where most console gamers are not going to be uh, happy paying that kind of money and then have a lower price one and you got the issue if you got like a you know you got that six teraflops to 1.3 on the original xbox are you going to be able to drive the price down in time so everything i've been hearing on from friends in the industry is that they're being told when the Xbox uh, Scorpio comes out or whatever that thing's going to end up being called, they will still have to code games to work on the Xbox One S, as it said, but I'm sure they also mean regular Xbox One, for at least three years into the life cycle. And then after that, I imagine it's going to kind of take like an Android space where it'll be like, if developers feel like their indie game or their AAA game has, like the original console has the horsepower to push that, then they could definitely put their game on there. I'm sure a lot of indie developers will keep on putting their games on there because they tend not to use up a whole lot, but with something like um, that kind of performance gap where you've got like that's that much of power uh, gambit there where there's, you know, 1.3 to 6. I think after that three years time, just a lot of AAAs, I would not be surprised that they'd uh, just dump it and treat it like a new console generation. And my hope is, is in time, we won't get that anymore. We, they're, I feel like Xbox is trying to correct some of the mistakes that they made with this current design. Uh, they got a lot of crap from people not being powerful enough and whatnot. And I know that put like a really kind of thorn in their side there. They, they really didn't like that uh, coming from uh, reviewers and gamers and whatnot. Okay, so I think eventually what we're going to see, uh, it seems like with Xbox, they might be going for a three-year life cycle, and I think it's going to be a pretty hard hit, and a lot of gamers are going to be pissed for the first uh, kind of changeover. Uh, I think after that, every substantial one every three years and won't be that bad. I think they'll kind of learn their lesson and tend not to go that overboard with their consoles. Tend not, Because the other thing is, it's price, right? Gamers typically don't want to spend past that 
uh, $450, $500 price point. Um, I really think PlayStation is probably going to end up doing it right. It sounds like they're going to go for every four years, and they're going to kind of target that 450 coming out. And then by the time Neo is the same age, like four years in, as the current PlayStation, it'll probably be around the same price, and they'll bring another one out. Um, I kind of see Microsoft setting into a, another cadence like that, or a cert similar cadence to that. And it'll just, it'll be awesome. We'll be able to, you know, console gamers will be able to keep their library just like us PC gamers do. And not have to worry about, well, it doesn't work on this because it's completely different architecture and all that. And it's, it's really the way it had to go. I mean, um, I've been calling this on Final Save Cast for over a year now that this is probably going to happen with the uh, hardware. Because going x86 based, uh, CPUs solves a lot of problems. They could have also gone ARM, but I think ARM probably just didn't have the kind of power they wanted to, and they wanted to be in that ecosystem around what a PC could do. So um, over time, I wouldn't really freak out. I know a lot of people are really freaking out over uh, this splintering the market. It won't. It'll be no different than what us PC gamers have, and it's actually a good thing in the end. It, it gives people choice. They can decide to get the lower end console if they want to spend that much, or the higher end one in the end. And like I said, in a couple of years, I don't ex expect there to be much that big of a price gap between uh, the high end console and the low end one. Maybe a couple hundred dollars. But that's why I needed to see what Polaris was and figure out. Because if this thing came out today and it was like running at 1266, but actually could overclock to 1.6. No problem and stay cool on this reference cooler and everything, which is like the dream chip, but didn't ended up happening happening for us. Um, that would have been a good indicator that this chip would have been what would have been Xbox Scorpio. But seeing that it's not, it's probably going to be Vega, which kind of has me a little bit disappointed in a way because I don't see how they're going to deliver that kind of performance at a reasonable price. So, anyways, guys, thank you for listening to my gameplay commentary today. I hope you had a great time listening. Leave comments and feedback down below. Of course, this is all speculation right now. You know, um, I don't even have the RX 480 right now, so I can't even give you guys numbers on that. But uh, I'm excited for this new GPU. It's coming in at a good price. Uh, performance is good. I would have expected a tad bit better, but it's still in the ballpark, so I'm not that upset about that. And uh, hopefully this will get AMD's market share back. We'll see. I think um, from seeing so far in the hype coming out of this, that possibly that could be what happens. Also, uh, Kyle over at Awesome Sauce Network is running a contest right now that he was so kind to include me in. So um, you go over there, and I will put the link for the video down below. And you guys can, if you like this video, give me a like. If you dislike, dislike. And... Uh, I will see you guys in the next video.